Hey everybody, welcome to Fatso Radio. How you doing? How you doing? I know in episode number 123, folks, in this episode and every episode is brought to you by Volpe Martial Arts. Check out Volpe Martial Arts for more details. Volpe Martial Arts is KW's hottest, newest Kung Fu and Hapkido school. My brother, Sifu Adam, brings you his lifelong passion, lifelong skill, lifelong excitement with martial arts. Hapkido, a Korean style, Kung Fu, a Chinese style, an amazing fusion brings it together. Check it out, Volpe Martial Arts. Folks, tonight I talk about three things that I think um you should do it works for me when you're on track when you're on track we're on our diet we're, whatever we do and we're on our track and we feel good what should we do i also want to talk a little bit about social media uh and about censorship in general thanks so much for listening folks don't forget to like subscribe notifications and all that stuff i love you all peace lily take it away that's a Fatso, Fatso, the really great podcast show. Fatso, Fatso, the very first podcast show. Yeah. Hey, everybody, welcome to Fatso Radio. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Friday, June 11th, folks. Another Friday, and it's my pleasure to come to you each and every Friday. Again, my name is Carlo Volpe. Welcome to Fatso Radio. Fatso Radio is a podcast dedicated to telling you, among other things, that fat is not the enemy. Animal fat, dietary fat is not the enemy. And it's not, for the most part, it's probably not the reason why you're either sick or overweight or have some health issues or trying to find better health. Somehow optimize your health. Fatso Radio is dedicated to telling you that dietary fat is good. Animal protein is good. High protein diets are good. Moderate protein diets are good. High fat diets are good. Moderate fat diets are good. What's not good is a high, high, high carbohydrate diet. Whole, all sorts of things comes with a high carbohydrate diet. Is High blood sugar is one of them, of course. And then a whole sorts of things come are comorbidities, really. A lot of things you can die from. A lot of things you can get sick. A lot of things get worse when you have high blood sugar. So my approach and what a lot of people are doing, but I'm trying to kind of evangelize, really. I'm not a doctor. Good time to remind everybody. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm giving you advice that comes straight from my heart, straight from my own experience. N equals one. I've experimented. I've done all the things that I've done and I want to share them with you. Tonight, I want to talk about something specifically and that's being on track. So I'm someone, and if you're like me, you'll this will make sense to you, but let me explain. I'm someone who has had a hard time staying on track over the years. I've had times where I would stay on track for six months and then fall off or stay on track for a week and then fall off or stay on track for two months or three months or even a year sometimes it felt like and then fall off. I want to talk about being on track. I want to talk about being the power of being on track. And when I say on track, I mean, following the plan that you set out to make yourself either stay healthy or become healthy, uh, maintain your weight or lose weight or gain weight or gain muscle, whatever I, whatever you mean, when you say, this is my plan, this is my plan for health and fitness. That's what I'm talking about. The power of being on track. And when you're on track and when you're on your, your way and you're doing good and you're in the groove, right? I, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. When you're in the groove, you're in the flow state, which is basically when everything's going well, you're on your diet. I want to talk about that. There's three things I want to talk about that is important to me, and maybe it'll speak to you as well when you're on track. The first thing, of course, is to stay on track. I want to talk about that. It's so important to, to maintain your momentum, right? It's it's all about habits. It's all about routines. And into, like I've said this many times, but when you want to, if you're pairing two or three or four or five days good or five good days together, you want to pair more than that, right? You want to put 10 days. You want to put 30 good days. You want to put six months of good days. You want to put a year of good days. The reason why it's so important, I think, in my opinion, really is to stack all of those good days of routines and good habits together, because the longer you do that and the more frequent you do that, the higher chance it's going to be a routine. It's just going to be automatic. And you've, you, we all know people that will say, it's just automatic now. I go to the gym. It's like, it's, I'm just programmed. I do it and I do it and that's great. That's amazing, right? When you're on track and you feel like that, keep it up. Keep it up because habits are maintained. Or sorry, habits are created when you repeat the same task over and over again. I think it's 30 days or 40 days. I can't remember what scientific knowledge says around how long it takes to actually create a habit or create a long-term habit. And that's the key of it. That's the key to it, in my, in my opinion, number one. When you're in track, when you're on track, focus on staying on track because it's easy to fall off. And what I mean by that is don't celebrate. Don't celebrate. 
celebration is you staying on track. Celebration is you getting to your goal or you hitting these milestones to get you to your goal because it's not just about the end goal. It's, it's the benefits of, of getting there, right? Every inch you get closer, every step you get closer is good. The second thing I want to encourage people to do when you're on track, because you have this power, and that's what I want to say, there's, there's this energizing power that happens when you're, when you're doing what's really good for you and your body is working well, okay? The second thing I want other people to do is help others. Promote whatever you're doing if it works for you, or if you just have some general knowledge or some general guidelines or, or some general tips and tricks or uh, some general practices rather that are really working for you, share it. Share it with people. Everybody's looking for it. Everybody I know is looking for a solution. Or even if they have a solution that's working for them, they want a little bit more information or they want a little bit more reassurance or a little bit more support. Everybody needs that. So it's really important to help everybody. That in turn will help you, right? Remember, it's not completely selfless, but it, selfless, but it is selfless, but it's also selfish in a good way because the more people you help, the more people um, have knowledge about it, the more the word spreads and the more people get healthy and the healthier people are going to be and the people you care about are going to be healthy, right? So spread the word, spread the word from your family, your friends, whoever wants to listen. Of course, you're not going to want to um, jam it in their face and, and every discussion, you don't want to take over every discussion with, hey, I found this new diet and I, I'm doing this. Guilty. Yes, I am the guy who does that. I'm the guy who's done that many, many times over the years. If I found something I thought was great, if I, hey, I have a podcast here that proves it. This isn't a fad, right? This isn't something that kind of was a trend for me, obviously, but this is what I mean. If you have something that you know is working and if you're on track and it's working, share it with others. Don't share in the sense of saying, hey, this is, I'm awesome, I'm great. Share in the sense of I'm doing this Maybe you can do it too. That's the whole idea, right? When I share every morning, I'm doing my 20 push-ups or 20 crunches or 20 sit-ups. It's not because, hey, I can do 20 push-ups because it's not a huge, a great feat to do 20 push-ups, right? Then again, as soon as I say that, I'm thinking, wait a second, maybe it is a great feat to do 20 push-ups. It depends on where you're coming from. It's all, it's all relative, right? So help others because it really does help. And, and, and I've, you know, it's funny, years ago, I see these motivation videos or people doing workouts and everything. At first, I used to really... I had a really hard time um, just accepting them or I had a hard time enjoying them or even just finding value in them. Um, but it was probably just my ego or it was probably my lack of self-confidence or my, my, um, my just worry that uh, probably that I wish I could do that myself, right? That's probably what it was. So now I'm doing, I'm doing these pushups every morning. I'm doing these crunches and I'm and putting them online and, and all two, eight billion people are watching <laughs> and thank you. So do it, share, 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 because it's valuable. The people around you, they want to see it. They want to hear it. Put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, put it wherever you want to put it. The third thing I want to talk about when you are on track and you're, you feel like you're in the flow or in the groove or in the, you know, you're, everything's going well. Usually people found like they feel like they have a lot more energy or they have a lot more clarity. I know people that when they go ketogenic or when they go carnivore, a lot of times they feel like they have brain fog there or rather their brain fog that they had is lifted. If you feel like that, if you feel like you have more energy, use it. So that's my third thing. Use the energy for good, along with sharing it and helping other people. Use it for something else. Use it for uh, maybe starting a new activity that you always wanted to do, or maybe start walking, right? Start walking or start walking farther than you used to, or start biking or start biking farther than you used to, or roller skating or rollerblading or skateboarding. I was at Canadian Tire today. Shout out to Canadian Tire. I was at Canadian Tire today and I saw a skateboard and I was like, this 42 and a half year old, 42 and three quarter year old is thinking about buying a skateboard. So I got to call my cousin BJ, get all the specs, see what kind of skateboard I actually need. But because he's a long time skateboard, peace. Shout out to you, BJ. Um, and he's also an awesome musician. Check out their band. What's it called? I got to put it up in there. I don't know your band. Sorry, BJ, I forget the name. Um, anyway do something with that energy. And when I, I really, really, if it's, if it's dance you're into, if it's yoga you're into, or if you um, are interested in these things and haven't done them, do it. Same thing as a new sport. If there's a new sport you, you're interested in, or if there's a sport you used to do when you're a kid, pick it up again. It's amazing. My God, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, but it's amazing what experience you could have if you reclaim your health again. That's what I want to talk about for a second. If you reclaim your health when you haven't had your health, right? I'll just use myself for example. In my 20s and in my 30s, I got really, really big. By the time I was 19 years old, I was over 300 pounds. I was over 300 pounds. 
over 300 pounds all through my 20s and most of my 30s. Once I started losing weight, once I started getting more active, once I started feeling better about myself, it was a combination of, of being able to do it, but also not, not being ashamed of doing it and not, not worrying about how I looked or whatever. And it's this old personal thing, right? So everybody has a little, their own little hangups. I get it. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not saying that this was your issue or your hangup, but that was for me, right? So I felt like I just, I felt more confident over time. I felt like I could do it more and I wasn't as tired. So it was more fun. And that's the thing, when you get in better shape, and you do all those activities that you want to do, the better shape you're in, in my opinion, the more fun it's going to be because you're not also taxed. You're not also exhausted trying to play these games or trying to play these sports that you want to do. And which leads me back to what I was, you know, what I found again, which was funny because I was playing softball, slow pitch, you know, as an adult with my brother and I was still, you know, still over 300 pounds and around 290, 280 pounds, whatever. But as soon as I started losing weight, coincidentally, I guess enough, but I stopped playing slow pitch and I, got it back into martial arts and martial arts isn't something is something that I haven't done since I was about eight or nine years old. So it really took about 30 years off it, but it was something that I had, you know, a natural, some sort of a natural ability, right? I was naturally flexible. I used to stretch a lot when I was a kid. So I liked that part of it. Um, and one of the things that came right back right away, was the flexibility. I was always kind of maintaining that through my years, but once I started getting more in shape and once I started losing the weight, it was, it's just easier to do everything. It's, it's, you know, it's easier to run around. It's easier to do stride jumps. It's easier to do pushups. It's easier to do crunches. It's easier to, to throw kicks. It's easier to throw head kicks when you're 200 pounds as opposed to 300 pounds, of course, right? And it's better to spar to avoid head kicks, not just head kicks, but any kind of kicks, any kind of punches, any kind of sparring or any kind of sporting that you're doing. For the most part, prove me wrong, but for the most part, you're going to feel better if you're in better physical condition because your body can move better. When you have better command of your body, that's like, then you have, if you have better command in your body, then you can do what you want, right? If you want to play a sport, you'll play it better. If you want to play music, you'll play music better. I truly believe that if you are, I think it'll make everything better. I really do. So pick up something that maybe you thought about before, or, or you had when you were a kid, or you did when you were a kid and you thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm, I'm 20 years old. I'm 30 years old. Or I'm 40 years old. Or I'm 50 years old. Or I'm 60 years old. I'm 70 years old. I'm 80 years old. And I want to pick something up. My goodness, you can pick up anything, right? And it's all about how you're, how you feel. You, literally, it is age is just a number. Age is literally just a number. I know people that are ten years younger than me, and don't feel as good as me. I know people that are twenty years older than me and feel ten times better than me. Right? It's not a competition. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not comparing myself. But age is just an age, or age is just a number. And you're as young as you feel, and you're as young as you act. And I really believe that. You know, my mom is always someone. Ma, I love you. Peace. It's always someone who's who's um, always kind of had that idea or how to have that that kind of that ethos. It's like you're you're as young as you feel. I'm never gonna get old because I'm not gonna let myself get old, you know. And that idea and that when it comes to health, I I believe that as well, and I do believe that from a from a perspective of staying young and everything. So do something good with that energy. Do something good. Call your mother. Go for walks. Call your father. Go for walks. Go. Call your sister, your brother, your aunts, your uncles, anybody who you know, go for a walk, go for a run, take up martial arts, take up yoga, take up dance, uh, take up Tai Chi, take up, I guess that's a martial art too, but take up anything you want. It's going to be good. You're going to feel it and you're going to feel, you'll be surprised at what that renewed energy and you'll be happy. You'll be happy of how better you can do anything you want to do. Those are my three pieces of advice. When you're on track, hey, stay on track. Of course, stay on track. That's the most important thing because once you fall off track, you're taking all of that work to get back on track again. We know how to get on track, back on track. I've talked about it in the past. Uh, and I'll say it quickly again. If you had a day where you feel like you just blew it out, you cheated, you ate like crap, you drank like crap, whatever you did. If you're in ketosis, if you're, if you're used to ketosis and you've been in and out of ketosis, here's my suggestion. Fast for the next day or at least half a day, right? Now, if you're diabetic and you can't fast and all these things, and if your medical condition not doesn't let you fast, of course, don't do that. Talk to your doctor. But my idea of the idea of fasting is you are truly cleansing yourself. And that's the, that's the best detox I've ever learned about. That's the best detox I've ever experienced. I've taken every shake, every fruit, every vegetable, every bl everything in the garden I've blended up and tried to jam down my face and jam down my throat. And I've drank everything folks, everything I could drink. If we were talking about funny stuff. And you know, when I was a kid in high school or college, I could drink any kind of alcohol. I could drink anything and nothing, nothing has detoxified me, made me cl feel cleaner, got me into ketosis as well, 
nothing like fasting, nothing like fasting. There's a saying, if you can't go four hours without a meal, you got to go eight. If you can't go eight hours without a meal, maybe you should go a day. The idea is that we need to be able to go without food and fasting is that fasting is an amazing thing to get you back on, on, on track. So I don't want to go too off track here, but those are the three things. Stay on track. It's important because it'll keep you and everybody healthy, help others because it's just the thing to do. It's you're not just sharing information, but you're sharing love. That's the most important thing, right? Thoughts or radios. The reason why I have this giant heart here is because at the end of the day, what I want to share with you is love. It's truly love coming from my heart because I feel like this is going to help you or I feel like it could help you, right? I'm not going to shove it, shove it down your throat, but it could help you. And if it does help you, great. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Good time. Your mind, everybody. Thanks for like, thanks for your likes. Thanks for your subscribes, uh, your comments, um, hit the notifications bell. So you will be alerted for all my new videos. Thanks for keep on sharing. I do want to keep on expanding folks. I want my audience to grow and grow and grow. Um, I want to get more people on the show and doctors, farmers, butchers, you name it. If you know somebody who wants to be on Thoughtso Radio, email me, thoughtsoradio at gmail.com. The last thing I want to talk about, folks, is social media censorship. It's not directly related to diets at all. It's not directly related to um, ketogenic diet or, or carnivore diet, for that matter. It's not even related directly to Thoughtso Radio, but it sort of is. I don't know. I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but there's words and rumblings that there's something like the shadow ban on the internet where certain websites and certain videos or certain posts or certain articles are kind of banned, you know, in a shadow sense where not officially banned, you won't get notification that they're banned. They're just not shared as much as you would think. I think that's a real thing. There's many reasons why I think that's a real thing. One of the reasons why I think it's real is because there's so much heavy, heavy censorship right now in social media. There's so many efforts to try and debunk Everything that is called fake news now, we don't use that term that much anymore. Trump's not here. But everything that they consider to be fake news, dangerous, conspiracy theory, anything against the, the uh, official narrative, right? They're banning and they're censoring it. And they're censoring people's voices. They're censoring people that have links to doctors and lawyers and researchers and professionals and all of these different people that have all these sayings that are trying to say out, trying to speak out and trying to form these groups. These are being censored. These people are being censored, folks. It's real. It's real. You're not going to hear that they're being censored on NBC. You're not going to hear on Fox that they're being censored. You're not going to hear on the mainstream media that they're being censored, but they are being censored. I hear every day from all sorts of people that I know on my friends list and colleagues and ex-colleagues that have concerns about any sort of vaccine, any sort of precautions, health precautions, any sort of policies as far as um, social distancing and health precautions and all of this stuff. There are many, many, many people, folks, that are questioning this. Don't let the media tell you that it's just a small fringe. Don't let the media tell you that it's just a couple crazies down in Kentucky or down in a couple crazies in Northern Ontario or a couple crazies down in Manitoba or a couple crazies down in the East Coast. Don't let the media tell you that there are crazies and it's a small, small minority. Don't let them tell you that. Don't believe it. They will tell you that, but don't believe it. Just ask around. Take a simple poll. Take a simple check with the people you know, and you'll find out very, very quickly. It's not all. It's not all at all like the media says. It's not all like the media says where we all believe what they say. So good. People are starting to realize it. I think the media is getting so extreme. They're getting so, so blatantly pushing a, a very strong left agenda, right? Which is really having people turn on each other. I really do think that from a racial thing, from racial aspect to a sexual orientation aspect to a gender aspect, every aspect the left is trying, in my opinion, it's the left infiltrated media is trying to divide us. And it doesn't make sense, folks. It doesn't make sense. We should be trying to unite us. If there are no differences and values between different colors, which I agree with, then we should be uniting people. We shouldn't be segregating people. We shouldn't be separating people and making them do privilege walks. We shouldn't be doing that shit. We shouldn't have special organizations set up and special policies set up that are trained to tell people, to tell white people that we're inherently racist. That is wrong. It's not true that white people are inherently racist. It is true that some white people are racist or some, it are some true that some people from every ethnic group 
and every race are and can be racist. That's the truth, folks. That's it. That's the truth. The United States is not inherently racist country. It's had racial moments in the past and it still has racial moments today. The racial moments today, in my opinion, aren't institutionalized. They're not. They're individual and they're terrible and they need to be attacked, not attacked, addressed right away. Anytime racism is up, address it right away. There you go. That's what I think. It's not a racist country. And I don't think it's our job and it's our job to even let our school boards and our universities and our colleges teach our children that it's bad and we should be guilty. We should feel guilty to be of any color, any color at all. Does it make sense for a person of any other color other than white to speak up and say that they're ashamed of their privilege or they're ashamed of their success? It's ridiculous. It doesn't mean I don't love anybody of any color. And if you know me, you know that I love everybody of every color. It doesn't matter. And at the bottom line, at the end of the day too, we don't, we shouldn't have to prove every single moment that we're not racist or, or, or that we do love everybody else. And one of the ways we should be doing that, or one of the ways we could do, be doing that is by getting rid of things like critical race theory that teach us that white people are just racial, racist and other theories like that. So again, not to get too far off the, off the deep end here on the social media, but social media, things are censored. A lot of things are censored. A lot of things are banned. And don't, please don't think if you have, please don't think that you're the only one. Please don't think that you and cousin Jim are the only one or crazy Carlo we're the only ones or Carmen back home or anybody. Don't think like that. There are a lot of people just do a sanity check. Talk to people you talk to, talk to your family, talk to your friends, right? The other thing too, I'm trying to encourage people more and more to do, and I didn't do this before and I'm starting to do it now. Write to your congressman, congresswoman, congressperson, write to your member of parliament, provincial parliament, federal parliament, wherever you are, write to them, write to them, write to them, call them, call them, call them. They have a job to do. Right. And if they get 10 calls on one thing, they'll notice. They get 100 calls on one thing, they'll notice. They'll notice. Don't be afraid. Be brave. I understand. I understand where the fear comes from. I understand. I have fear as well. I have fear of a lot of things. Right. But I'm trying not to let my fear hold me back. I hope you can do the same if it works for you. Thanks for watching Fatso Radio. Thanks for listening to Fatso Radio today. Again, when you're on track, folks, stay on track, help others and do something with that newfound energy. You'll be appreciating it more. You'll, um, it'll help you keep on going. It'll help you maintain those three things as well. Social media with the censorship, folks, don't be afraid to share what you need to share. If Facebook ends up banning half the people I know on any given day, what's going on? What's going on? If these posts from four years ago are being banned, or if these posts are being coming up saying, oh, this went against community guidelines today, but you sent it four years ago, who gives a shit? Like what's going on, right? We need to speak up. We need to speak up. The people that are making the money, it's hard. I don't know how to do it. Tell me if you know how to do it. If you know how to speak up to Facebook and all these social media groups to tell them the right way, let me know. It sounds like there's a lot of effort going on to censor things right now. Bill C-10 in Canada. Um, let's fight folks. If you are against specifically Canadians right now, or if you are against censorship, if you want the internet to maintain free, to stay free and open like it is today, the internet is not regulated in Canada. It's not regulated in the United States either, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. If you want it to stay that way, speak out. Call if call your member of parliament, please call, call your member of the liberal parliament, tell them you don't want this. Tell them so they can tell Trudeau he's being an idiot. And the government is being, they're trying to control us. They're trying to um, make big money and they're trying to, they're trying, they're just trying to censor. And I don't like it. And a lot of people don't like it. Folks, thanks for listening to Fatso Radio. I love you all. Peace. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 wait. Forgot my sponsor, lifelong sponsor. This episode and every episode is brought to you by Volpe Martial Arts. Check it out, folks. VolpeMartialArts.com for more details. I love you all. Peace. That's so real. Ba -ba -ba -ba. But I was going to say thanks for listening. And thank you all for listening. Let's say bye to everybody. Bye. And we'll say thanks for listening. Say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. That's so radio, the really great podcast show.
That's so radio, the really great podcast show. So get your butt and get in your chair. Don't eat your nails and don't pull your hair. We'll talk about chicken or talk about steak. We'll talk about fat for, for goodness, goodness sake. sake. That's so, that's so, the really great podcast show. That's so, that's so, the very first, first podcast, podcast show. show.